Hi everybody, Dr. Morris here. Infertility TV has reached 10,000 subscribers. This makes us the largest infertility YouTube channel in North America. Thanks to all of you viewers and subscribers. With more subscribers comes more questions and comments. So we decided to dedicate an episode to answering some of the more common and intriguing questions. Please take our poll to tell us whether you wanna see more episodes like this one in the future. Our first question comes from Mona Lisa Jaramba, who would like to know more about ovulation bleeding. It's important to understand that when an egg is maturing in a woman's ovaries, hormone levels are changing. Prior to ovulation, estrogen levels rise. The estrogen makes the uterine lining thicker. Right before ovulation, there is a small drop in the estrogen levels before it recovers. This drop in estrogen can sometimes affect the uterine lining and cause a small amount of bleeding or spotting. This is a relatively common thing and there hasn't been any evidence that it will interfere with your ability to get pregnant. Rebecca Chen asked if we could do a video about a type of uterine abnormality known as a unicornuate uterus. There are a variety of uterine abnormalities that a woman can be born with. To understand these abnormalities, it's important to know how the uterus and fallopian tubes are formed in the first place. During fetal development, there are two tubes known as Mullerian ducts, which move from the sides to the middle of the abdomen. Eventually, the lower part of the tubes fuse together. This becomes the uterus. The upper part stays separate, and these become the fallopian tubes. In some cases, this process doesn't work like it's supposed to, so women can be born with the right and left half of a uterus that is completely separated or partially separated. This is called a uterus didelphus, and and a bicornuate uterus. Sometimes one side doesn't develop and you end up with half of uterus. This is called a unicornuate uterus. Women with these uterine abnormalities can still deliver a healthy live-born baby, but they do have a higher rate of problems. Women with these uterine abnormalities more commonly have infertility and miscarriages. They are also more likely to deliver too early and need a C-section for delivery. Because of the risk for delivering prematurely, it's highly recommended that these women try to avoid having a twin pregnancy. The best way to reduce the risk of a multiple pregnancy is to have IVF but transfer a single embryo. Our next viewer says that she has endometriosis and wonders what the best cure is. Endometriosis is a problem that occurs when the tissue, which normally grows inside the uterine cavity, instead grows outside the uterus in the abdomen. Endometriosis can cause both pain and infertility. These areas of abnormally growing tissue respond to hormones the same way that the uterus does. So when a woman has a period, these implants will also bleed. This causes inflammation in the abdomen, which can lead to scar tissue, also known as adhesions. Scar tissue can cause a woman's anatomy to become distorted and make it harder for an egg to get into the fallopian tube at the time of ovulation. So it's easier to understand how adhesions interfere with fertility. Women who have only a small amount of endometriosis and no scar tissue still have more difficulty getting pregnant, but it's less certain what the reasons for infertility are in those cases. There are a number of different ways that endometriosis can be treated to try to improve fertility, including surgery and even IVF. Okay, we hope you enjoyed our viewer questions episode and thanks again for watching our channel. Help us get to 20,000 subscribers by sharing this channel with your support groups or in social media. Don't forget to like this video and if you're not yet a subscriber, subscribe right now. It's like having an infertility specialist in your phone.